Good evening. Welcome back to the EG Reading Rounds. In the next 10 minutes, I will review some of the benign EEG variants. We do not have enough time to go through each and every variant that has been described, but the main idea is to review some of the variants which are commonly seen on the EEGs. Now what do you mean by benign EEG variants? This terminology is used for sharply contoured waveforms that you see on the EEG which can be misinterpreted as epileptiform discharges meaning these could be read as something to do with epilepsy. And over the next 5 to 10 minutes I will review some of the waveforms and caution you to be careful when interpreting some of these EEGs. So we are on chapter 9. This is benign EEG variants and the question is select psychomotor variant. So let's analyze each of these slides separately. Let's start with this one. So what do you see here? And the question is, what do you specifically see in these boxes? To review, this is a bipolar montage. Odd numbers are on the left, even numbers are on the right side. So the first four channels record from the left side of the brain and the last four channels record from the right side of the brain. Here you're seeing some of these eye blink artifacts. So these are eye blink artifacts. When you see an eye blink artifact, these are eye blink artifacts, along with muscle, there is a high likelihood that this person is awake. So there is eye blink and there is muscle, so this person is awake. And you see these sharp discharges that occur at the time when you have these eye blinks. So these waveforms are called lambda waves. Lambda waves, this, this here, these are lambda waves. When you see lambda waves, these are one of the benign variants these should not be interpreted as epileptiform discharges and when a person scans an image or scans any kind of a printed material you will see these kind of waveforms show up in some of the individuals so lambda waves are benign variants these should not be misinterpreted as epileptiform discharges and have nothing to do with the diagnosis of epilepsy so going back to the question select psychomotor variant let's look at this one here so this is an average reference SNA is my initials of my name and this is an average reference montage all odd numbers are recording from the left and the even numbers from the right without going into details about this EEG what I want to show you is this activity right here which you see at F7, T3 and T5 this is recorded at a time when the person is drowsy and asleep. You see a rhythmic activity here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so theta frequency does not evolve in amplitude and frequency a whole lot from the beginning here to the end here. You see it in three channels. This is something that's called rhythmic mid-temporal theta activity of drowsiness. This was formerly thought to have some association with temporal lobe epilepsy and was called a psychomotor variant but this is a benign variant this has nothing to do with epilepsy an epileptiform an epileptic seizure may start like this but then it evolves into frequency it evolves in amplitude it spreads in distribution and if you have all those characteristics then you can say that that was that is a seizure but without those characteristics a rhythmic mid-temporal theta activity that is self-limiting monomorphic monomorphic means the same morphology so this wave is very similar to this wave which is similar to this wave not a whole lot there is some variation but not a whole lot of variation so this pattern is rhythmic mid-temporal theta of drowsiness also known as psychomotor variant as the name indicates this is seen in drowsiness if you see this kind of a pattern when a person is wide awake then you do not call it a psychomotor variant so the correct answer here is the psychomotor variant here if I select this this will show up as the right answer and we'll move on to the next slide I want to show you one more thing on the previous uh, slide so let's go back there the question has changed select lambda waves which we already discussed so this was the lambda waves so when you see something like this this is a very simple, this is not even a benign variant, this is an activation procedure. So what you see here, these red marks here, 
this indicates that the, that the patient is being stimulated with strobe lights so during photic stimulation you see a frequency in the occipital head region that matches the frequency of the stimulation this is called a photic driving response so anyone who reads EEG knows this pattern very well and this is not epilepsy form has nothing to do with epilepsy in people who do have epilepsy during strobe lights or people who do have photosensitive epilepsy meaning epilepsy that is sensitive to flashing lights you may see epilepsy form discharges at this time of strobe lights probably in one of the other chapters I'll show you at a later time but for now it's important to remember that with photic stimulation if you see a frequency in the occipital head regions that matches the rate of the strobe lights this is called a photic driving response and is normal there is nothing abnormal about it with the lambda waves that you had seen here it's important to also see what the occipital sharp waves uh, look like so during the occipital sharp waves if you you're look seeing those at P301 since the deflection is downwards it indicates a possible negativity at O1 these are epileptic form discharges only seen on O1 during while the patient is asleep there are no eye blinks so these are epileptic form discharges that you see here these are not uh, lambda waves and these are not something that's called posts which is positive occipital sharp transients of sleep uh, we'll discuss that at uh, one of the other uh, chapters so let's go to the second slide here you see number of patterns so select small sharp spikes I'll go to it right away what you see here in the box first there is no eye blinks there you do not see a lot of muscle artifact the EEG is slow so this patient is most likely asleep you in fact see some degree of sleep spindles that are also there so these small tiny small sharp waves that you see here and also see here these are called small sharp spikes this is a benign variant these are also called benign epileptiform transients of sleep uh, the characteristics of these sharp waves is that these are typically less than 50 microvolts they do not disrupt the background and the frequency is less than 30 milliseconds so their duration in fact not the frequency but their duration is less than 30 milliseconds so duration of less than 30 milliseconds amplitude less than 50 microvolts seen during sleep without a clearly defined electrical field these are small sharp transients which are a benign variant so the correct answer here is small sharp spikes if I can check that that will be the right answer it gives us our score here but we'll retry the chapter go and do some more slides here so let's go to the second slide here what do we have here so this may be read as slowing which is if you in the thickest in the strictest terms this is delta slowing but this is a glossokinetic artifact glossokinetic artifact is produced when a person is talking or moving the tongue and this kind of a rhythm that you see sort of a squarish delta waves this is something that can be seen with the tongue movements if you are an EEG technician put a few electrodes on your head try moving your tongue and record your EEG and you'll be able to produce one of these artifacts this is called glossokinetic artifact it is not indicative of any dysfunction it is normally seen in most individuals one thing to remember is the tip of the tongue is relatively more positive than the base of the tongue something that you may be asked in one of your exams what you see here this these are lateral rectus spikes so right before a saccade right before an eye movement you can see this teeny tiny sharp wave that precedes that these are called lateral rectus spikes if these are seen at F7 and F8 these are called just rectus muscle spikes if you see it in FP1 and FP2 another term for these lateral rectus spikes is pre saccadic spike potential and one more thing what you see here these are alpha frequency waves which are very sharp very spiky 
seen at C3 and C4. This is a rhythm that's called mu rhythm, spelled M-U, mu rhythm. The character of this mu rhythm is, if you see this mu rhythm, and you move one, your, one of your extremities, extremity contralateral to the side where it's seen, this rhythm tends to disappear. So mu rhythm is not epileptiform, it has nothing to do with epilepsy, it's a benign variant, it has a sharp morphology, but does not indicate any pathology. I will stop here because I'm running short of time. Hopefully in one of the other lectures, we'll discover some of the other benign EG variants. Thank you for your attention.